What's up guys, Bress here, and today we're going to be taking a look at Ascent Infinite Realm, the upcoming MMORPG in development at Bluehole Studio, the creators of the ultra popular Player Unknowns Battlegrounds, and the less popular but still fairly well known MMO Terror. In this video I'm going to provide you with a brief overview of what we know so far, and share some of my thoughts on whether Air, as the community are referring to it, is an MMO worth getting excited about. We haven't had a huge amount of detail yet, so I'll just stick to what we've actually been shown rather than providing any wild speculation, or even worse, total bullshit. Obviously the game isn't finished yet, and we've been told to expect beta testing to commence within the first half of 2018, so of course all of this content is subject to change. One thing in particular that stands out in the video is that the footage seems to have been recorded at a low frame rate, and it looks kind of jerky at times. Now, I'm going to assume that this is just because the game is lacking polish at this stage. As always, we give these games the benefit of the doubt while they're still in development. However, if it performs like this at launch, then it will be a totally different story. It's also worth mentioning that at this point, the payment model has not been disclosed. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's dive right in. The developers are describing Air as an epic journey where machines meet magic, and this is certainly evident in the recently released trailer that we're playing through right now. Two games in particular instantly spring to mind. Firstly, I'm definitely seeing themes from Final Fantasy XIV when it comes to the steampunk-esque mechs and airships that feature heavily. Secondly, there are undeniable similarities to the art style of Black Desert Online, which is no surprise considering that the games share the same publisher, Kakao Games. The characters in particular are very reminiscent of BDO, though we've been told that there won't be any gender locking, which I'm sure many of you will be pleased to hear. On top of all this, it looks like they've also thrown in a few Skyrim themed dragons for good measure. All in all, this mixture of mechs, airships, machine guns, dragons and sorcery is a pretty cool looking theme. And that's definitely a compliment coming from me, as I'm personally not big on Eastern MMOs if I'm being totally honest. However, I can understand and appreciate the reasons that others get excited for them, and I think the theme of Air is going to massively appeal to the many, many fans of this style. The graphics also look pretty good for an MMO, and they're certainly better than many of the other games that are currently being developed in the genre. The core gameplay in Air revolves around the idea of multi-dimensional realm versus realm combat. So what does that mean exactly? Well, you're going to be participating in large-scale PvP battles that involve both aerial and ground-based combat. And rather than the battle in the air being totally separate to the battle on the ground, aerial units will be able to bombard ground troops and ground troops will be able to blast them out of the sky with anti-air weapons. In my opinion, this really expands the scope of the battlefield and adds an additional strategic component to realm versus realm combat. It kind of feels like the next evolution of the system we've seen in games like Black Desert Online. I think it could be quite interesting, for example, if you fail to keep the enemy's ground troops occupied then presumably they're going to be able to support their own airships with anti-air weapons, and most likely they're going to decimate your fleet. Therefore communication between the air and the ground is going to be vital, and coordinating these battles is probably going to require someone willing to play the role of general. That's if the team's going to have any hope of victory at least. Therefore, just like in most PvP focused games, well organised guilds will likely dominate the realm versus realm scene. Interestingly, it looks like realms are going to be taking turns to attack and defend, rather than the weaker realms being in a constant state of defence due to either lack of players or lack of skill and coordination. This new twist on realm versus realm combat is the reason that I'll give this game a go at launch, despite the fact that I don't generally get on with Eastern MMOs. It'll certainly be interesting to see if it really does become the ultimate battle experience that the developers are describing it as. Right now we don't know the specifics of the combat system, but we can see from the footage that it's going to be very action heavy. It'll be interesting to see if it follows a similar combat system to BDO, as whilst I'm not a huge fan of full action combat in PvE, as I honestly just don't think anyone has managed to make it feel tactical and rewarding enough yet, I do believe that it can excel in realm versus realm combat. This is due to the fact that coordination of the team is far more important than the performance of any given individual. For example, action combat will feel much more rewarding than tab targeting when you focus your fleet's firepower on a strategic objective, such as a key fortification or powerful enemy ship. I actually think the action combat versus traditional MMO tab targeting argument shouldn't really be an argument at all. In my opinion, both systems can excel in the right context. I personally think that Air has an opportunity to really improve on existing action combat systems, 
and I hope they manage to implement something fresh and exciting. Another interesting element of combat in air is that your character abilities are going to be customizable. This is going to be achieved through accessories that will allow you to define your own combat style. Realistically, we're more than likely going to see cookie cutter specs, as people will optimize everything within the first week. I'm not really sure how any MMO will ever break away from this, as there'll always be a most viable path for each encounter, however flexible a skill system becomes. And in the age of websites like Icy Veins and Wowhead, we're going to know about it almost immediately. Regardless of this, it's nice to see some flexibility available. And whilst most builds probably won't be viable in truly competitive PvP, there are going to be other game modes in which they could be enjoyed. Despite the fact that the core feature of Air is seemingly its multi-dimensional realm versus realm combat, it looks like PvE is still going to get a good amount of love. The specifics of PvE content aren't 100% clear at this point, but we've been told that adjustable difficulty will feature for dungeons and hunting grounds, which I think is a vital feature if you want to keep serious PvE players engaged over an extended period of time. PvE content will also be customizable, and we've been told that players will be able to essentially design their own quests. Though once again, we're still awaiting further details before we can fully understand what this feature will actually look like. It's a cool concept, though it's one that's very, very easy to get wrong. Either way, I'll keep you informed as we learn more. There are currently five classes to choose from in the game. First of all, we have the Warlord, a warrior endowed with superior physique who wields gigantic weapons at the front line to protect his allies. We have the Sorceress, a master of the arcane arts who commands an arsenal of elemental magic. The Gunslinger, a battle-hardened marksman who strikes from range. The Assassin, a stealthy rogue who unleashes deadly damage from the shadows. And finally, the Mystic, a being who is attuned with nature and can aid their allies through the use of healing magic. You can check out the Air website, which I'll link in the description down below, for a little more detail on each class. But don't expect a huge amount of detail at this point. Again, I'll keep you updated when we hear more. There are a couple of other standout features that have been talked about and that I want to mention quickly. Firstly, we have customizable airships. Essentially, you'll be able to build airships of different shapes and sizes and customize them based on their purpose. Whether this is something you'll do as an individual or as part of a guild effort will be interesting to see. We've also been told that rather than simply getting player housing, we'll be able to build player estates. These estates will provide various functions and benefits and there's even been mention of working together with neighbouring estates in order to reap further rewards as part of a team effort. Of course, there are plenty of other smaller details that you'll be able to discover by digging deeper into the forums, but as this is a brief summary, I want to just stick to the main points. Overall, I feel like Air has some promise as an upcoming MMO. In particular, I think the new spin that they're putting on Realm vs Realm Combat could be an exciting new direction for the genre. And even though Air seems to borrow heavily from other games, it brings the various components together in a way that feels quite unique. However, let's face it, it's going to have to bring something pretty special if it's realistically going to take any market share away from the mainstay MMOs that have been holding the lion's share of players for a very long time now. I'll be continuing to cover the game's development, so if you want to get that content when it comes out, then be sure to subscribe to my channel, and I will see you next time.